for those of you just tuning in, this is the SC Reddit Open number six. We are watching the uh, game two of the third place best of five between Navi and Chompy, a Zerg versus Zerg mirror match on Metalopolis. I am Harlequin, and I'm honored today to be here with Diggity and Moltrap, who are commenting as well. So Diggity and Moltrap, how are you guys doing today? Doing pretty well, actually. I'm glad I got to do, again, that this is happening early rather than later. 3 o'clock position, we have Chompy, by the way. 9 o'clock position in red, we have Navi. And I should say pink. I like that for Navi. Um, it's nice and suitable. It's not like that peach color we saw in Brood War. Um, and red on the other side should make the character or the both players rather distinguishable. Um, and this is going to be on Metalopolis, which is a bizarre Zerg versus Zerg match. Or map, I should say. <laughs> Yeah, we'll be surprised to see what happens here. Again, the traditional matchup uh, was is the Baneling, uh, Baneling Zergling kind of mirror match where everybody blows up in each other's faces and tries to take out their econ. And uh, I see this traditionally on this map a lot, but uh, it's a far away positions, and uh, this is the kind of match where a you know more sophisticated Zerg who wants to defend with roaches can get away with not going Banelings on this. But uh, as we saw last game, it didn't matter. It was her choice in. It was ultimately her choice in Hydralisks that restricted her movement so much that uh, she just couldn't compete with uh, with the mobility of the Mutilus. But on this kind of a map, the Mutilus, I think, have a little bit less mobility because it's a little easier to march your army around. So I'd like to see you know, how both players plan on expanding and whether they're both going to go Mutas or both going to go ground or what, but it's pretty open right now. I just have to say that I just noticed for the first time that the eggs, when they're about to hatch, they like pulse. They pulse and like start changing color a little bit before they hatch. That's kind of cool. Anyway, <laughs> both players uh, scouting a sort of a skew. It looks as if uh, Chompy's caught onto what's going on a little bit quicker. He's sending his overlord uh, towards Navi's base a little bit quicker. But um, like you said before, Navi now going with uh, what you mentioned was her trademark with the extractor first and then the pool as well. So going for some very quick uh, tech there. Uh, Chompy also with a pool and an extractor though. So uh, it's going to be pretty similar here. I almost feel like this is one of those maps that really favors Roach sort of play, where you can play, especially at distances like this, you can go take an expansion, you can play a lot more defensive, you can get the Roaches, you can put them out in the field, and I almost feel like in Zerg versus Zerg on Metalopolis, instead of seeing a lot, where it's still possible to do some of the more um, Baneling heavy play, especially with it's still a very large natural expansion, but I feel like you can get the Roaches out there, you can defend it and turn it into a longer macro game. Yeah, so far with this build, whenever I see um, Nadi get the early gas, and uh, <clears throat> she usually almost always goes roaches. In fact, every single time I've seen her, she's gone roaches. Now we see her actually going ahead and getting the metabolic boost early too, which makes me wonder if she's going to swap up and go banelings as well. We already see a roach, uh, roach warren going up for Chompy, and uh, Chompy has elected not to get metabolic boost. And you know anybody who's been watching this all day, every time I've seen a uh, Roach player not get Metabolic Boost, they usually criticize him a little bit, because the two go very well together, even if you don't plan on getting too many Zerglings. So we'll have to see uh, if she's planning on getting a Baneling Nest anytime soon, and if he's really going to not get speed for his Lings, because that could be a huge mistake if she ends up going Banelings. Thus far, uh, yeah, the Roaches are definitely going to have be kind of a temporary advantage, and that's I'm looking also to see if uh, she's going to go for a Baneling Nest or something else. Oh, an expansion actually going down for Navi, similar to last game. Uh, was able to hold that expansion last game, um, although kind of reverse text from last game. There's the Baneling Nest coming down. So um, Roaches are going to be able to come out here and be pretty good for dealing with these Banelings. So I think Chompy's probably going to have an advantage here coming into the mid-game unless uh, Navi put some pressure on pretty quick. Nope, the first roaches are going to be coming out very soon, so uh, I think a window has been missed. Mm, I'm not sure I like this decision on Navi's part. If, you, if she was, in fact, going to go for a hatchery um, early, I would have gone for more the roach play rather than the baneling play. Banelings, while they're fantastic yeah. at going out and being aggressive and doing a lot of destruction, unless you're going against a zergling heavy army, they're not that fantastic as far as just pure defensive units, and it looks like she's going to run up. She does have speed. She is going to be engaged uh, Chompy right there and take out a lot of those units up. What I almost wanted to see her do is go for a plus one speed zergling um, to try to cope with roaches that might have been 
one on the uh, opposite end and try to get an advantage that way. But in the meantime, it looks like Chompy is going to go Roach Baneling, and I almost feel like, yeah, he's as long as he can run forward, put on some aggression, and keep Navi back, it looks like he should be able to. He's got a pretty good defensive uh, base there. He's, he just needs to get that queen behind that Roach. Uh, it looks like he's doing so. A little bit of exposure right there, and Navi losing a couple Zerglings needlessly. Let's see if she actually gathers up. If she actually has an opportunity here, if she can gather some more Zerglings up and maneuver around the Banelings that might be coming out shortly, um, she still might be in a good position to hold this back, maybe switch uh, tech forward here, but uh, once she gets Lair, and it looks like she is going to have Lair just right now, and let's see what she decides to do with that. But yeah, in the meantime, I still feel like Chompy still has a pretty good shot to take this. Yeah, I, I definitely agree because uh, you know the banelings are, are there's not even any banelings out. I, I I think maybe if if Navi somehow pulls off something with uh, running in banelings and uh, like Harlequin was mentioning earlier, going for some kind of a econ bust, you know, busting some banelings in the drone line or something like that, um, might be able to get enough of, a, of an advantage. But otherwise, she's gonna have to switch up tech pretty quick. And there's an Evo chamber going down. What's that back there? A spire. There we go. So there's some tech. So it appears that Navi might have even realized that she was out teched with the roaches and just decided to go for something else. But uh, one way or other, she's going to have to deal with a little bit of an attack coming here pretty quickly. Um, I don't see anything around that she can use, actually. She's got a handful of zerglings, but uh, she's going to need a few more if she's going to deal with those few roaches as well. I actually do like the uh, decision here. So basically, Chompy had to wait no matter what those speed zerglings. If he moved out, he was going to be vulnerable. I don't like the fact he didn't build just one or two banelings inside of his base just to blow up any zerglings that might get through and then attack the rest with drones and then just push out with his roaches a little bit earlier. Instead, sitting back, it looks like he's going to have the banelings, and now he's just going to try to tempt out those zerglings with that handful of roaches and then try to take out as many drones as possible here. Let's see how Navi can react to this. She has some banelings over oh, oh, Let's see if she can get the oh. banelings. Uh, do some damage. Looks like the natural secondary. Oh, wow. Explosions everywhere. Looks like both Roach is taken out. Maybe losing some <laughs> harvesters uh, in the meantime. So at the moment, wow. Uh, at the moment, it looks like Chompy's going to maintain, once again, a macro lead. Still has more harvesters and is once again leaping ahead in harvesters, just pumping Jones, feeling very comfortable with Navi in a defensive position. Navi, once again, if she's going to stay in this, she needs to stay on top of building drones here. Yeah, that was some seriously mutually assured production there, and I was just getting to the point where I was thinking, oh, what a bunch of good players. They both got Baneling nests, they were prepared to use them, and then nobody built any Banelings. And then right at the last second, everybody decided to make Banelings at the, you know, she made defensive Banelings, he made offensive Banelings, and they just blew each other up like crazy. And so now we're back to the Muta versus Muta battle with, uh, it looks like Chompy is getting the plus one upgrade right off the bat. That's kind of one of my favorite things to do in a Muta versus Muta matchup, is that one extra damage really helps if you're in a perfect mirror match. So looks like Chompy is still maintaining a couple of roaches, but uh, so far it's just going to be mutas on mutas. Yeah, some good muta on muta action should be fun. Navi's got the mutas out a little bit earlier. Running around picking off some overlords doesn't seem to affect it Chompy too much at this point. This time, neither player has a huge econ advantage, so we're going to see a more sort of straight-up fight. It's going to be pretty tactical from here on out. They both got the same tech. They both got expansions. They've both got mutas. Uh, they've got, got about approximately the same amount of drones. They both got their two queens. So from here on, it's going to be uh, it's things have kind of evened out. It's almost as you know, kind of going back to the beginning, but uh, starting in the middle, if that makes any sense. So um, <laughs> both players are going <laughs> to. <laughs> it's going to come down to basically just who can macro better and who can maneuver better and who can tech switch better from this point. And that's going to be interesting to see what choices are made um, and, you know, what scouting is done, that kind of thing. But both of them seem to be building up a chunk of mutas basically at this point. I kind of feel like Navi uh, feels like she might be in a little bit of a more difficult position. She has the speed zerglings, which can be countered by the uh, basically a couple banelings that are well placed. In the meantime, she's not going to be able to do a lot to those roaches, so she's having to commit very heavily to mutalisks to try to maintain this. It looks like the harvester count is just about even. Chompy on the prowl for overlords, um, and unfortunately, it looks like he is finding some on Chompy's side, and that actually is going to play a big factor at this stage of the game. Who can supply block who? Right now, Chompy getting a big win, running up and. Uh, 
uh, able to take out that Overlord, which is going to put Navi into the red, so she's going to have to continue to produce Overlords, which is basically going to be the difference between 10 troops right now um, here and there, and that is exactly a 10 advantage. Wow, that was just kind of a number I pulled out of nowhere, and it turned out to be exact. <laughs> um, in the meantime, Navi going to try to take another expansion to the 12 o'clock position, um, and she's left her main completely vulnerable, almost losing her queen there at a big engagement here, and whoever comes out with this is going to have a big advantage here. I think Chompy's going to end Chompy up losing with this one Oh, but he's got a clo uh, he's got a further reinforcement point. Some zerglings uh, coming out of nowhere for Navi. Not quite sure what that's about. He's trying to retreat. He does have plus plus one weapons, but with a shorter reinforcement point, he's <laughs> just more feudalists. Um, not gonna get it done. And I missed that. There was a uh, proxy the spine crawler in the back. Enemy spine which the crawler. Yeah. Be able to take out. Yeah. But I've been talking forever, so I'm gonna pass it on. <laughs> that was kind of lol. I didn't even see it at yeah, all. Yeah, that was Apparently, pretty good. That was a good. No one saw that. Attack. Yeah, none of us. I didn't even I didn't even catch it there. But that was a good timing attack because in the in the traditional sense, he waited till he had a plus one upgrade, went and attacked, and pretty much what I think wanted for Navi in that. And we got some more fighting going on here, and uh, this time he's actually outnumbering her her like subsets there. But what wanted for her was she actually, if you caught it, she moved the queen up and had the queen participating and was transfusing mm. the, the wounded. And so oh. even though he had the plus one damage, she was able to kind of focus fire her way through it with the transfusions, which That's really helped happens. out a bit. And now you can see she's got the plus one armor almost done as well. <clears throat> so she's going to kind of counteract that a little bit, which is a strange choice, but hey, why not? Yeah. I totally her missed that. That was, a really, that was a really clever move, actually. With I, I didn't even notice the transfusion. Navi's gotten the third base up. It looks like Chompy's gotten the third base up as well. Very, very... Um, you know, mirror matchup in all in many senses of the word here. A lot of zerglings out for Navi. I'm curious what she's going to end up doing with. It. Look at that, tons of zerglings. 36 zerglings on the ground, only eight roaches, almost a match depending on the terrain. But uh, I'm really curious if, if she's going to try and maybe morph some banelings and go for a major mutaling attack or something of that of that kind. Here comes the mutas attacking. Chompy's attacking Navi's new third base. Um, Navi coming in with the zerglings. They must just have them grouped up with uh, her mutas or something like that, and they ran a little bit ahead of it. Uh, so she's going to lose a few. But here comes a huge muta battle, about even mutalists, about even upgrades. Both players just need to do some target firing if they're going to win. Somehow Navi coming out ahead, Navi with the plus one armor, proving a little bit superior to the plus one weapons um, on the Chompy's mutalists. And Chompy's mutas go down with six surviving mutas for Navi. Um, a huge advantage, and here come the Zerglings! This is a circling follow-up. Wow, now is she going to engage the armor? Is she going to blow right past it? Looks like she's actually engaging the army, and then we'll fly in with the rest of the mutas. And uh, I think this could really end the game right now. If yeah. he doesn't if he doesn't put out a whole bunch of zerglings right now, that's the end of it. And it uh, looks I like he knows it too. Yeah, I think he's going to GG here in a second. He's got mutalisks uh, trying to... <laughs> they're destroying everything out there in his main. He can't really build both at one time with limited larva. There's yeah. GG. Well played by Navi, I have to say. Nice.